Welcome back to week three of the 100 Book Challenge. If it is your first week joining us, go to the 100bookchallenge.com or just click on the link in the description of this video to learn about what the challenge is. Uh, but those of you coming back, this is my week three update, which was a big success. I got twice as many books in half the amount of time, almost tripling my accept rate, coming home with 114 books. In this update, I'll show you exactly what I did and exactly how you can do the same thing. Okay, before I get into the details of how I got twice as many books in half the time, let me go over the numbers for week three, just the overview numbers so you can see how it went. So first of all, I scanned 3,825 books. If you remember from the first two weeks, my first week was somewhere around 7,100. The second week, last week, was around 7,900, just under three, no, 7,900, just under 8,000 scans. So only scanning 3,000 books this week and coming home with more books than I did the previous weeks, Obviously, I changed something, and it wasn't just the location I went to. So, 114 books, the accept rate came out to 3% for week 3, over 1% uh, the following two weeks. So, pretty big jump. My list price for week 3 was 2659 which I believe uh, was the highest it's been um, from the previous weeks. i got to double check on that, but I believe the list price the highest at 2659 uh, the average list price per book was $23.30, coming in a total profit of $1,270. My cost per book was a little bit more than last week at $2.50, and my profit was also a little more than last week at an average of $11.14 for every single book that I brought home. Now, if you remember, I said that if we want to be successful at this 100 book challenge, we want to aim for about $1,000 or more. Uh, an estimated profit each week because we're not going to be selling all of those books. Uh, and so I'm happy with $2,000 uh, or $1,270 in estimated profit. That's where I want it to be to give some wiggle room. Some books won't sell, some books will go down in price. And so I want to give some margin there with what we'll actually need to hit our goal for the 100 book challenge in that first 90 days. So now that you've got an update, now on to the good stuff of how I got more books in half the time, which I was really excited about because first two weeks, I spent a lot more time than I'd originally expected scanning books. Uh, scanning 8,000 books takes a little while. We talked about time a little bit in the last episode, so look at that um, and how long it takes if you haven't watched the last update I gave. Um, but I started thinking about the 80-20 rule and trying to figure out ways that I could optimize my time, optimize how many books I was scanning, uh, and still hopefully get my goal of 100 books a week. So what I noticed looking through all the books that I got in last week and even a little bit I would noticed the first week is that a lot of them had the same color tags on them. So if you go to thrift shops and libraries, a lot of you probably already know this, uh, but a lot of you maybe haven't even paid attention. They know what books to pull off the shelves and what books to put on the shelves by the color tags. Normally they do it on a three month cycle or four month cycle. So let's say January is pink, March is purple, the different colors for different months. That way when they know four months has gone by, they can pull all that color tag off the shelves, put all new color tags on the shelves. What I noticed was about, not even 80%, but 90% of the books that I was taking away from the location all had the same color tags. And of course, it happened to be the current month's tags because less people had scanned those books. There was less opportunity for people to go there and take those books. So those happened to be the most profitable books almost every single time left on the shelves. Very few times I get other color tags um, because they've been there for a month, two months, four months. So people have had a lot of time to scan those. A lot of the profitable ones have already been taken, so there's not much there. There are going to be a few, but not a ton. And I figured out they accounted for most of the books. If you look through it, a lot of the current month's books are still being put out, so there's not a ton of them. There's a lot more from the past two, three, and four months. So I decided to do an experiment this entire week, and I decided I wasn't going to budge from it. I was going to do it the entire week and see what happened. So everywhere I went, I only scanned the current month's tag. If I didn't know what it was, I would ask one of the employees. I'd figure out what it was, and I'd skip over every single book unless it had the current month's tag on it. Now, 
what I did before was just scan every book. I'd start with the most profitable sections, and if I had time, I'd go all the way down to the least profitable sections. Scanning everything because I knew I wanted to take everything that had profit off of those shelves. And if you have time to do that, um, and you feel like that's the best use of your time, then go ahead and keep doing that. But I didn't want to spend that much time considering most of the books I could pick out already. So the entire week, I only scanned one to the current month's tags. And as you can tell, I scanned about half as many books because there weren't as many of those books. And I got more books actually than I had the first two weeks because I was getting a higher accept rate. I was able to get through more sections. I was even able to get through most of the fiction sections sometimes because I could just go through, pick out the current color tags, leave everything else behind, unscanned, get out of the store, maybe even hit another location the amount of time it would have taken me to just do one location. So I personally feel like that's a better way for me. I want to do a little less time out there scanning, spend a little more time with my family after I'm done with work and still get the same amount of books. So for me, it's a win. I'm going to do this again next week and see if I have the same results. I'm going to look for those colored tags. Now, maybe your stores don't do it, um, but I imagine they have some way of figuring out which books have been there longer, which ones haven't. A lot of our stores have a pink tag like this or a purple tag, blue tag, whatever it is, so you can see the month. Some nice stores put it over the edge right here so you can see it without having to pull out the book. But if it's not on the edge, I just finger through the books, flip them over as soon as I see the colored tag, pull it out, scan it, put it back. Uh, some of the other bookstores I saw had little tiny colored dots on the corner or the edge of the book, which is also their way of marking the books. So if your stores have that, if your libraries have that, I recommend just doing that as an experiment. If you're used to scanning everything, maybe try just scanning the co colored tag of the month and see if you have the same amount of books you take away from location. And I imagine it's going to be pretty close uh, to the books you would have normally taken, and you're going to be taking about a quarter of the time you did before since those books aren't as prevalent on the shelves. So give that tip a spin this coming week. See if you save time. See if you have more books coming in. I hope it helps you like it did uh, me. I'm going to be going and trying to build some relationships this coming week. See if I can maybe make it even more efficient than I did this week. Try and get those 100 books even faster. So I hope you have a good week four scouting um, and good luck.